There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. My baby goes that night and stays till the morning comes. All right, how we doing, guys? Doing good, sir. Hola. Got Papa Smurf and Tex Mex and Jordan on tonight. Pop, is that you change the nickname every time? I like Papa Smurf. Papa it fits, Smurf, it fits Grandpa, you yeah, Polly G. They they pick one, all of them. Are we there yet? Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. We have a rolling <laughs> list of names for him. So we are uh, we are in a new location tonight. Uh, actually, outside of uh, Indy. Yep. We drove north a little bit. We are in Muncie, Indiana, home of Ball State University, and we are at chirp, chirp. N- New Corner Brewing. Is that right? Is that New Corner Brewing? New Corner Brewing Company is brewing the company. official okay. name. And so we have uh, two guests on with us from New Corner. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves. Sean Brady. I'm the owner and brewer. Okay. Excellent. And I'm Mark Watson, and I do about anything he'd like me to do. <laughs> <laughs> so are you kind of like his pool boy? Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. That's the clean version. That was a clean version, yes. I, He's see, wearing I kept a that, Speedo right now. I kept that very PC. <laughs> <laughs> A- after hours, it becomes a cabana boy. Oh. <laughs> there you go. He likes the hot oil. So how long have you guys been uh, open and operating? So, gosh, uh, 2013. So what is, um, no, 2012. 12. So five years. Going on five, five years. years. Nice. Five years. Cool. Production, production here at this facility for four. Um, been doing beer here. Yep. You guys originally, before the show you were talking to us, you guys originally started off to do just production only, <laughs> and then you kind of took a little bit different turn, and now you kind of have a little tap room going on too. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So as you can see from our uh, lovely surroundings in uh, nearly undisclosed location, um, we we originally had this in mind to be a wholesale uh, business model. And the reason for that is when we started brewing in Muncie, um, as a production facility, um, we were only had the ordinances to be in the industrial park. And oh. so we are located in the industrial park at Muncie in okay. a warehouse facility right. um, because the, the law w- w- would only allow that here. They, because didn't, they didn't know the law. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they, changed the, they changed the ordinances uh, they did about change a, a year ago, March. Right. So for about a year and a half, you've been permitted to, to open up a brewery anywhere. Elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. In Delaware County. So, um, but nonetheless, uh, so that's where we started. And we, we, we intended this place to be our production. We do wholesale, later open a tap room somewhere else, you know. Um, but this has really become a, a place people find us. We, uh, yeah, we get a really decent weekend crowd. Mm-hmm. People coming of, in. A lot of tour buses. And things a lot of tour buses. See. Yeah. Oh, we have a, a lot of tour buses and things like that. Awesome. Uh, actually, there's what's the one in Muncie that they run around? The ho- um, Hops and Vines. Hops and Vines. Yeah, Hops and Vines runs around here a lot. Oh, it's so kind of like kind of like the Brews line down in right, Indy exactly. and those ones. Okay, yeah, they just started that tours. last year, so we actually get a lot of buses. And Muncie has a trolley as well, and no they'll bring kidding. it out here. So, oh. and they usually come here first or last or whatever. People hang out, and we act like Sean was saying, we've never done that, and that wasn't the plan. We actually just moved everything that you're sitting at. Was all all this was this down was here. fermentation space was where we're sitting yeah. this fermentation <laughs> so, space and we moved that down and put these tables in here it was kind of just thrown together hey so if it works though right and it keeps growing but so. your your brewery when you walk in it has a very unique feel to it I know you guys are going to kind of change is. it up but us coming from our um, anti prohibition background mm-hmm. so the front door kind of looks like an office you walk in right. and it's it kind of like an office. <laughs> And then you walk through the uh, little blue door, which you expect to find just a storage room. Bam! Yeah. It's a brewery. Right. It's like, <laughs> oh! Exactly. And there's an eye hole, and we have cameras, so we there's just a secret handshake, and you know. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the feel you kind of get from it, though. I like it. I like well, it a lot. Yeah, the first we, thing I thought when I walked in, I'm like, this kind of speak easy ish back in here. There's, there's barrels. Well, and there's, there's, you know. There's yeah. guns hidden as well, so. Hey, yeah. I like that I got frisked on the way in here. You know? <laughs> but the funny thing is. We don't is do that to everyone. That lady that frisked me, she walked out like she doesn't even work here, so. <laughs> I don't even know who you're talking about. I was, I was looking around the wall for the button that I pushed, the table goes like into the ground, you know. Know, and up pops hide. like the little thing when I got a book in front of me. <laughs> Suddenly I'm reading instead of drinking beer. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it does. It has that kind of feel. It's, it's very nice. It's a, I love it. I love. We love this kind of atmosphere. It's got yeah. that, you know, just small independent brewer type of feel. I, to I it. like and I like being near the the equipment. I like you know being able to see and, and mm-hmm. you know things that are being made and, and any of that. It's just it, it gives you a little bit of feel and a little more uh, connection to the beer you're getting ready to enjoy. Well, right. you know, depending on the day, you could come in here and we're brewing. 
Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's all, and that's that's the good part about it. If you really want to learn, you can actually see the stuff going down, and and the you know sweat and hard work you guys end up having to put into this. And we <laughs> might yell at you to grab a hose. Well, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We uh we do some home brewing ourselves, so we're familiar. With, and obviously, you know, from doing the show, we're very familiar with the brewing process. So, uh, we do a little bit of home brewing. Uh, we have a brewer down in Indy that actually brews a couple of our recipes for us, puts it on tap for us, puts our name on it. Very nice. Cool. We don't get anything out of it. He just does it because he, you know, a good friend of ours and gets our name out there, you know, and then people, it, it works for him too because then people go, what the hell is Blind Pigs? What, you know, what kind of yeah. beer is that? And then he <laughs> gets to talk about us and stuff. So it's just fun. But uh, yeah, we do get to do that. And then we've had a couple beers on production line and it's a lot of fun for us too. And then we get to come out and meet all of you guys and what you do and everybody has their own unique stories and stuff. So it's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. So how'd you get this started? You're, um, how long have you were you home brewing before Sean? yeah i started home brewing um gosh a long time ago uh <laughs> 2005 late five early six it's not that long ago no <laughs> no he was two i was <laughs> yeah i started brewing when i got back from afghanistan and oh yeah you're in the you're in the national guard yeah it was right. full-time okay in the army national guard until i don't know when did we start the brewery again 2012 <laughs> 2012 2013 um yeah i started home brewing after i got back from afghanistan a buddy of mine uh used to run the public radio station here in town and he got me a wine making kit from their wine tasting mm-hmm. thing he got it for me when i got back from afghanistan and said hey here you try that and i was like eh, I don't have time for that. You just got I, back from Afghanistan. You need something to drink. Yeah, so so I went ahead and I don't want to wait. I, I went ahead and made it, and so I, I I I suck at making wine. You have to be patient to do that. Yeah, no. And I'm not. He's and not so much better at beer. my dad patient. did it. My, my patient dad with beer. Yeah. My dad tried to do it growing up. We were growing up. I grew up on Washington and Arlington down in Indiana in Irvington. Okay. My dad tried to grow a grapevine in our backyard and brew wine and stuff. <laughs> I think he might have been brewing something else down there too, but yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah, he didn't have the patience for it either. So, yeah. so everything he needed to make beer was in that kit. So I was working in Indy, I was driving downtown to Pennsylvania um, every day and driving right past Great Fermentations. And so I started brewing there. Uh, Darren from uh, Beer Brewery was still working there with Anita, yep. and he and I would talk and create recipes and i'd be brewing three four times a week (laughs) Uh, running out of room uh by the time i got off of active duty i had most of a commercial system knowing that i was coming off of active duty and thought i've got a retirement locked up let's go and make this happen well hell yeah so that's that's, awesome that's a perfect plan right there so how did you end up joining the Join the gang here. Uh, that's an, actually so, an so interesting question. So, like, <laughs> m- like day minus one, I'm out here kind of moving stuff in, and it, it's Mark Carl's out of the woodwork brewery. <laughs> <laughs> I actually worked next door at Midwest Metal. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, some friends of mine, we worked in. Enge- I've worked in engineering, still kind of do sales and everything, but uh, we were we always get online and look for new breweries to go to. Yeah. And we've been doing that for about the last five or six years, and we drive to Indy, you know. Well, yeah, it's a little bit work. limited in Muncie right. for your total. Yeah, so, but there's still good stuff out right. here. So when we started looking around, that that's that's all there was, and so I get on, you know, the Indiana Indiana Guild and mm-hmm. I'm looking around where the new ones are. Like, hey, we're gonna go this Friday. So I get on there. I'm like, there's one next door. It's got to be. <laughs> there's no way. I'm like, it's an office. This is like. So I start laughing. So at lunchtime, I drive by, and I'm looking, and there's no at that time, there was no sign. Yeah, we didn't and, even have the sign up. Right. And <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, there's it can't be. So after work, I thought, I'm going to stop by there anyway. So I stopped by after work, and I think a couple other guys came with me. And we walk in, and obviously, like you said, you walk in, it's a, he's got his office and everything up there. And just kind of looked at him, and <laughs> like, what he are goes, you doing how, here? how you doing? And I'm like, uh, is this a brewery? Yeah, come on back. And at that time, you had Rubicon. I did. And you had Montucky Rye. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And I said it, Montucky Rye. Yeah. But the, which we don't call Montucky Rye anymore. There's some people got upset about that. But I still think it's a great name. And um, kind of like Noble Tucky but, or yeah, yeah, right, yeah <laughs> exactly. Everybody's Tucky at the end. If that's what it's, it's Rye. So it's it's a, you know it's a good name. Yeah. So we come in and we're we're tasting the beer and everything. And we're like, man, it's pretty cool. And Sean's an awesome guy. And I kept telling him for a couple of years. I was like, hey, if you ever need any help, let me know. Well, finally he was just like, hey, I need some help. Let's look, if you want to do this, I can let you do this. And so that just kind of grew from there. 
Let's get it straight. You probably he couldn't get you to leave. Exactly. I might as well just put you to work. Yeah. Might as well, put him, <laughs> well yeah. Do some. Yeah. Be productive. He's here at lunch and he's here at dinner. <laughs> well, I, I, aren't you supposed to be working your other job? Wait. It, and what I see, I was in the military and I actually did locksmithing, so I didn't have to pick locks. So I would come in the back door. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why the door was always unlocked back yeah, there. I, and it, I would I come in in the morning. Bright tanks, half empty. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm just tasting. I'm quality, quality control. Quality control. <laughs> That's awesome. So we have a uh, flight of your beers in front of us, so I think we should definitely get started trying these because we've got five to get through in this uh, hour we're going to be talking to you. So which one do we need to start with first? Um, I would go light. Let's go with the rye. Rye first? Okay, yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. So on the far right. Okay. So the rye on the right? So this is an American rye. We do a lot of rye. Uh, almost half the grist in this is rye. Yeah, so it's going to be a little more rye-based than most of them would be. So yeah, so it gives it a bit oh, yeah. more of a mouthfeel to it as well. That, yeah. that The rye has that... A uh, higher protein content, um, yeah. So you're going to get a lot more. It's it, got that harshness to the rye, right? And I don't mean harshness in a negative term. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the rye flavor just is a harsher right. flavor to your palate. Yeah, it's so, not soft like a wheat. No, right. not at all. So I like it. It's it's. I hate the, to say this, but it, it tastes like a manly beer. Yeah, right. The more you, <laughs> I didn't want to say, I didn't want to say, I didn't the use more that you, word, but yeah. the more you drink of that beer, and this is, I tell everybody this, but the more you drink it, the more you'll like it. Mm-hmm. And there's some, you know what kind I'm talking about. Yes, definitely. Especially on a hot day. That's a great summer beer. Yeah, I wouldn't. At first, I'm like, I'm not sure really. It's it's because of the the robustness of it, you right. know. I, I really like, I, I've been sampling your cream ale already. Right. Well, pint samples, but you know how it goes. But <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're right. I mean, as I take few, uh, a few more sips, it's, and we have had them sitting out a little bit. Um, so it's gotten a little warmer. And this right. might do better, you know, a lot. Yeah, pretty it's good, good very, chill, very, very cold. cold yeah. yeah. But it's still, yeah, you're right. It's, it's got that r- man. That rye is there, but it did there's take no me, bitter it was, hop it was, on the min- end at all. It's great. I it did know. take me two sips. The first sip, I was like, oh, different. Second sip, I was like, ooh, good. And the third sip, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a manly right, beer. Right. It, it, just, it, it took that it long just well, for right. just for it to settle in right. for me to get the full flavor of what was going on there. So mm-hmm. now we we use Willamette and Centennial in this beer. Yeah. Uh, blend of hops uh, just to cut through that, give it that nice crispness to it mm-hmm. um now, now, we, are you fully self-taught or did you i mean i know you said you were hanging out with darren and, and great fermentations but it's still did you did you go like work at another brewery for a little no, while or do any of that no nope. awesome well, entirely self-taught I re- so i i uh i started <laughs> so i listened to a lot of jameel uh zena chef um, okay. um uh, brewing classic styles uh he and john palmer had that uh podcast for on the Brewing Network for a long time, right. and I listened to all those episodes. And then um, when I started really thinking I was going to be serious about this, I started buying technical brewing manuals and um, reading technical beer geekness. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, some people learn. Yeah, it's, it's all a matter how you learn. I mean, and well, some people really do it that way, and they're able to do it. Others, you know, they're just, they just go into it as a brewery, as a, you know, was a youngin usually and then just worked their way up and learn it that way but yeah, either so, way it works so and, right. i started out with kits because everything all the variables were the same right right and so i would take a kit and i would tweak it until i got my process down and then i would be like okay now i'm going to go to partial mash now i'm going to go all to grain. all grain and i would change my and i would st- stick with kits until i would be like okay I, now, I can repeat the kit over and over again without screwing it up. Now I can experiment a little more. Now right. I would take that and I would, because I was brewing three times a week. My wife almost divorced <laughs> me, but I was brewing. <laughs> they so always much. love the hop smell in the house. Yeah, don't they? Yeah, they yeah. And so I, I would brew after work and <laughs> like 10 o'clock at night and I'd still have like a boil over on the stove and she's <laughs> mad and like, get out of here. And uh, do you even know you have children? Um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got one here. He's he's, he's watching the tank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so <He's> transferring. <laughs> but I would tweak. I would take that recipe and I would go. Okay, what if I did it with this? And then I would go and I would talk with Darren at Great Fermentations. Like, hey, it did this, and I want it to really be like this. Can we add a little bit of that? And what would that flavor do? And how would we get it? And where do we put it in? And what's the variable? And being that you work with Darren, and Darren is now a uh, head brewer of Beer Brewery. Yeah. And they they make some fantastic beer down there too. I mean, Darren definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to brewing as well. Yeah, that's a good I one to learn love from. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And his dad Jerry is the shit. Love you, Jerry. Jadada is still my favorite there. 
Mm. It's not always available it's if you haven't had it. The Jadada. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry texts me a lot. So hey, <laughs> when you, when I get to be back on the show, Jerry's kind of a show whore when it comes to <laughs> blind pit confessions. Love you, Jerry. <laughs> so when we get to the Rubicon, that was a, originally a homebrew recipe that I developed with Darren. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. And this one is your just your APA. It's an American Pale Ale. Yeah. Yep. Is that the next one down the uh, line? I would not. St- I would go to the brown next. Okay. Which is this one? So on the, the, on the one. exact so opposite. Exact end. opposite end. Because it's going to be more malty. Um, I, I don't want you to lo- get, get your hop on and 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 right and thank, lose that flavor. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this is going to be. You'll taste the hops in this one though. It's it's not a. Which one is this? It's a, uh, this, this is, is this is a little Chicago. Little okay. Chicago. So wow, we sugar. brewed we brewed this beer with a beer tasting club here in Muncie called the Consortium of Great Minds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. With a, with a I'm like, it's, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they've been around a long time, they and uh, they do beer tastings and travel around and taste beers. And uh, we developed this recipe with them, right? Um, based on their suggestions. So it's a collaborative effort. And we were like, what do you want to taste? What do you What do you like? What do you don't like? And we we put this together. And so this is actually the one and only time we brewed this beer. We didn't do an experimental batch up front. Oh. We just threw this and said. Let's just go. Let's do it. And what's your capacity? What are you What are you brewing at? So we can we can max capacity at five barrels. Okay. Um, our mash tun is our limiting factor. When we get, start getting our bigger beers, we uh, are like our strong scotch. We can only do three. Oh, okay. Putting that much grain in, and I don't like to. I only like to use grain. I don't like to use a lot of adjunct sugars, uh, cane. Thank you. All that stuff. Yeah. So perfect. Everything comes from the malt. Um, the only time I would do that is just to try and dry it out a touch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we use brown sugar in this in this beer. More for flavor. More for the flavor. Yeah. Where'd you put the brown sugar in at? So uh, we put uh, it in the boil. Okay. Yep. So I get it. It's a lot lighter tasting than I thought it was going to be looking at it. Mm-hmm. But it does have still has that full mouth feel, and I yeah. do get the sweetness out of there, which I'm assuming probably comes from dropping that brown sugar in it yeah it's lighter than the color but fuller than the nose yeah. yes it's definitely. a very in between. it's very it. yeah. subtle and it's it, it hits the spot I, I really dig this i've been enjoying that beer probably way 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 too much um <laughs> considering you brewed it once yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, and, it's, and it's here. close to seven percent um oh. and it, it i i think that there's a complexity and a depth of flavor for uh, for a brown, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot more robust in the brownness of it. Um it's got that dark chocolate. It should have some caramel toffee, mm-hmm. uh some probably some dark sugar, brown sugar, dark sugar kind of flavors if yeah. you think of uh opening up the 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 spice cabinet where mom yeah. keeps the brown sugar. Right, you smell that. Right you right smell that. that uh and I get that nose. The the other thing I get in this beer which was unintentional, which I would consider a flaw is comes from that brown sugar too is that alcohol up front. Yeah, so it's a little. Yeah, it's a, it's it's got a little bit there, but not enough to spoil it. I no, mean, it's still, it, but it, it is. It, it comes there. in strong, but it, it like it it backs off really quick. Right. right. What, yeah, if, like, what if you did more like the because uh, brown sugar is basically molasses and yeah. sugar. What if you went straight? Or do you, do you plan on doing this again, or is this a regular? You know, um, we hadn't talked about it. It's not in the brew schedule because I, I went for a month to hurricane duty so oh, we're a little yeah. behind on our regular stuff we're right now up. would molasses be a replacement just yeah, the straight I, molasses I so. to avoid the that. sugar that was actually the goal with the brown sugar the dark brown sugar is what you used yeah it wasn't Super the lighter brown oh, okay sugar. good yeah, so yeah, yeah that's what we were actually going for but i didn't want so much i wanted to control that molasses flavor and yeah, since we weren't doing a, yeah. since we weren't doing a, an experimental batch up front i didn't know what that would do I went with brown sugar in order to keep it toned down and i can understand that because yeah molasses depending on what you get is Jarring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, molasses I remember, in its pure form can be very syrup tasting. Yeah, well, yeah, I went to a sh- like a, a it was like a sugar farm or whatever down in Florida. Where I took my nephews, you know, because they have like this big pancake house or whatever, and it's famous or whatever, and and got them some pancakes, and they're famous for their molasses. And my nephews had never had true molasses. <laughs> they put it all over their pancakes, and they took mm-hmm. a bite, and their faces were just like. Yeah. What yeah. the hell was that? Yeah. That's not sweet. <laughs> Where's my syrup? <laughs> I'm like, no, that's molasses. Yeah. No, it's really good. But it, yeah, I can. And so yeah, it's that weird balance. You either you either got to deal with a little bit of the burn, you know, a little bit of the higher alcohol for the, from the sugar, or is the you know too much molasses would put an off putting nope. flavor to it on right. the front. And we did something special with it. You want to tell them about? The- yeah. So we did. So a great friend of mine, uh, growing up, uh, was a member of the consortium. He passed away, 
uh, a few years back and named Brian Eckstein, and he worked at the public radio station, and they asked us to brew a beer in his honor for All Beers Considered, which was just this past weekend. And we took it a five-gallon pen, and we cast conditioned it with local honey Ooh. and made a honey brown because Brian's – Brian's go-to That's beer good. was the Honey Brown. Honey Brown. And I'm telling you what, that, that beer was That's pretty awesome. Excellent. That's a neat way I, to do it. I was very happy with it. We took uh, we took some of the brown. I put it in with the honey so we could get it a little dissolved because um, honey is very syrupy, too. Yeah. And we put it in the pen, and we cast conditioned that for, I don't know, uh, a little over a week. Yeah, that's right at. And uh, it came out nice, west. nice and carbonated. Awesome. Had a great honey nose. Great honey nose. That would have been awesome to try. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Yeah. That sounds awesome. And that might be something we do special for here. And yeah. That, that's what we're trying to figure out is kind of beers that we can do here, beers we can always have, and the beers we want to sell to everybody. Obviously, so, yeah. Right. Yeah, you got yeah, to balance that out. Yeah, you got to have your staples that, that uh, everybody gets used to, and they know right. that they can go out to the local restaurant or the, or the uh, liquor store, wherever you guys are distributing at, right. and, and get that. Can and then you want those special beers that they know they can only get here because that still draws them in. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you get them in here, and then you can get them sampling other stuff. And then, mm-hmm. you know, it, it always works out well for you if you have a couple right. that are can only I feel, right I f- here. I feel like I want to be part of a consortium. Can we call this the Blind Pig Consortium now? I do. I like that term. <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> copyright Blind Pig. So <laughs> copyright 2017 Blind Pig Convention. We've been uh, – hey, See, that, that, that group started out. There are a lot of – there were a lot of professors and people in town that – or you know had kind of the higher end jobs i guess yeah. i should say or i don't know how to say that but um but so they all got together and they just drink beer it's a reason it's just like starting a brew club yeah oh, i got a home brew club oh, no, we're, awesome, we're gonna yeah. get together this friday we're gonna and brew beer and drink like, oh yeah you're just yeah that's kind of what we technically started so. out we started being yeah, <laughs> was, there yeah. You go. we just all we're sit gonna, at the garage we're gonna meet, talk on the radio and yeah and <laughs> drink beer that's <laughs> perfect well, what do we what uh so not not just the beer, and we're going to talk about a few other things, but you guys are also doing collabs with uh, some other places, and I have cheese in my hand. Yep, Tulip Tree Creamery. Cheese. Holy shit. Yeah, and it's all they're they're really good. Yeah, yeah no good. kidding. I haven't, this I haven't, is I haven't, phenomenal. Creamy. I'm still talking. I haven't tried it yet, so what is the cheese, though? So this is a beer cheese made by Tulip Tree Creamery, Creamery down in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. and they took uh, our brown ale, and they use it in their cheese. It's horrible. You won't like it. Yeah, oh, awesome. I, I call it Fumunda cheese because it's with the brown ale, and yeah. you get it Fumunda. <laughs> I don't know if that's the correct name, <clears throat> but it's really good. Should much you, much, much better than beforehand. Well, yeah, I, well, I didn't want to tell you that before you tried it's it. Much better than taint cheese. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> no, uh, so it's I've, taint. I've, I've had too much of that. It taint no had, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> taint no cheese. So this is uh, this is a beer cheese. Wow, this is right. awesome. Right, it's man. an actual wow. beer cheese. Yeah. Now, I'm a big wine drinker. Sorry. I hate cheese. Yeah. This cheese is great. Wow. Yeah. Like, seriously, like, I don't do cheese like this, but I wanted to try it because it, it was infused with your beer. Yeah. This stuff is great. Yeah. Like, wow. I, they, they do a great, great job, and, and um, they, they, they do farmer's markets and specialty stores down in Indy hmm. with this. Uh, we generally get two wheels of it to sell at our farmer's market here in Muncie on Saturdays, and we sell two wheels or or six pounds of cheese on a Saturday morning. Good lord! Yeah, we need to tell them that you need more cheese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. No, I mean, and and that's uh, I. When we talk about it, we repeat it over and over again, and some of our listeners probably get tired. But you're still staying local. You're talking with some local people. You're making some local contacts. You're sharing. You know, everybody's sharing in the right. You know, keeping it indie, keeping it local, and then it's great. Even. All of that, this whole craft market, whether it be beer, wine, even to, you know, some sure. of the wineries. Because, you know, I, I know some, uh, there's some brewers who get casks from some of the wineries and, and will condition, you know, some of the their beers in like a wine cask and some things like that. But awesome, man. I mean, it's just, it's it's another good collaboration and expands you past just being a brewery. Well, right along with that, I mean, just kind of to, to grow off of that. When we do things, like the mm-hmm. lady that right behind us here, she has a farm. Mm-hmm. So all of our grains go to her animals. Oh, no shit. And then that's all awesome. of the water that we use to chill with goes right back in, and that's what we cook with the next time. Well, yeah. So Damn. everything. So, yeah, we're kind of 
and you're getting you know, a little self-sustaining kind of thing going. I'm not on a there. tree hugger or anything like that. I really love trees if it depends on how they're shaped. But, uh, <laughs> like me, a big tree. Right, I like I like I like <laughs> skinny isn't, trees. Isn't that a dendrophiliac? <laughs> Something like Let's that. Let's not go yeah. there. <laughs> what kind of farm does she have? Uh, it's she, got animals. She, she, and she does oh, ants. Just I, animals. <laughs> so so the, so the grain goes to her cows. <laughs> okay. But she's you've also got lambs, lambs, goats. Meh. So she's she's uh, planning on doing goat cheese. Nice. We used to have a pig. Sheep cheese. We used to have a pig. So our grain, a little bit of our grain would go to the pig. Can I say we, the name of your farm on? Yeah. And, go ahead. And, and the name, Skyhope Acres. Skyhope Acres. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, we did used to have. We had a potbelly pig for a little while, but he kind of outgrew my backyard, and my house. Now, now he's yeah. bacon. <laughs> no, I had to take him to a, a place where they have other pot bellies, so he won't wouldn't be killed because I couldn't do that to him. But yeah. oh well, I was yeah. I, man, I was trying to say something before you said wouldn't be killed. I'm like, yeah, we took him to a place where other pigs go. That supermarket, Damn. <laughs> bacon, the freezer. <laughs> nah, he was awesome. He just got too big for the to live in the house at night. So well, he, plus he was a bit of an asshole. <laughs> Only to you. Well, and everyone else, but he me, hated but, you know, everybody. Those exact words come out of my wife's mouth. <laughs> you're too big for the house, and you're an asshole. <laughs> And I don't, I don't get I that. I thought it was just me. I get that a lot at home too. I, no, I, I, it's that's why you spend so much time at the brewery. That's, that's why that says I a lot. That's why that's I podcast. Why I She's like, take the kid with you. We're fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> he needs to learn a skill. He's actually that's, driving me home, so we're good. <laughs> oh wow! So we just tried the cheese, and I know that here soon we're going to try pickles made with beer too, which is another new thing for me because I've never tried that in my life. But yeah, we were reading up. Uh, you know, we were reading up the other day on the brewery, and Jordan's like. They got beer pickle. What the hell's a beer pickle? <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, pickles. Uh, they brine it with beer as opposed to water and vinegar. It's beer and vinegar. Yeah, it's, we were talking earlier. I think it's um, like fifty percent. Uh, she said apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Right. And then and, and then whatever beer you guys choose. Yep. At the time. So yeah, we'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, so but. I think the beer was made with the Cardinal Red Ale. Okay. For these samples. Yeah. When you were originally doing it with another company, but you guys are kind of taking it in-house, too? No, no, no. Um, there's another company that's now in Muncie. Oh, okay. That's doing the pickle plant. I gotcha, okay. And the they're, doing, um, they're doing pickles now, beer that's pickles. Awesome. They're opening up here very shortly on, not far from us, over on uh, by the reservoir. Okay. So is this their product we have in front of us so right this now? Is a, this is a sample uh, I, I, they, they're where they were experimenting with recipes, and they were like, hey. So we, we hope they're good. Try this. So we don't know. Actually, oh, you haven't is, had these yet. No, this is a this is a new jar. I've had similar pickles to this. And and Sky Hope Acres does the 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 cucumbers that go into the pickling. So these are these are Muncie pickle Muncie cucumbers. Are these spicy? And Muncie Do you pickle. have pickles. more bottles of this? Because I dig this freaking pickle. It's got <laughs> spice to it. It no, does. I think, I think that's it. Is it really? It is. Yeah, this yeah. was an it's experimental gonna break one. They it's going to end up in my truck. Sorry. So, just, so Jordan <laughs> hey. used to creep me out. Jordan is a pickle lover, freak. You just call me a pickle fucker. No, <laughs> he said lover. Oh, okay. lover. Watch your language. Sorry. Make sh- you know, we're going to get some, into his some trouble. Here, come on. Yeah, I mean, we should have given him headphones that aren't plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> What? Earmuffs, um, earmuffs. But like Jordan, like we we'd go on vacation and stuff, and obviously you know we're out drinking late, and but he's begging for the pickles. he likes he likes pickles, and he but he also would like drink pickle juice out of the jar and gargle it, and like you know three o'clock in the morning, you know drinking pickle juice because apparently it helps a hangover in <laughs> in his world. It really does. Um, well. I was like, great. One more thing, one more reason you need to drink pickle juice is there's beer in your pickle juice now. So isn't there a martini that you can make with pickle juice? There is. Yeah. Well, dirty. Well, I don't know about pickle dirt, juice, dirt. but it's usually dirty. But that's is that pickle juice or no, that's, that's olive juice? Olive juice. The yeah. olive brine. Yeah. Yeah. So all I gotta say is I know you guys use beer, and Pat and I talked about this too. Or sorry, Papa Smurf over here. I'm a, we're but we're all a big fan of uh, Dickle whiskey. You guys have got to team up with George Dickel and get the Dickel pickle. <laughs> Because there's nothing better than a shot of freaking George Dickel and then a shot of pickle juice. But if you take a shot of Dickel, then you take a shot of Dickel pickle juice. That's like twice the fun right there. But then we wow. also said, what if you take a shot of Dickel and then you take a shot of Dickel pickle juice and then you eat a Dickel pickle? That's a Dickel, Dickel pickle, Dickel pickle. <laughs> That's a triple Dickel. That's a lot of... <laughs> a triple Dickel. There you go. See? Mark the triple the Dickel pickle. pickle. Better copyright that. Yeah. Copyright. Five <laughs> everything. Me and, no. me and Sean's been doing. Wow, that's really good. Um, it's a little sweeter than like I'm a I'm more of a dill fan, but I am too. And sweet pickles are usually not my thing. I think my dad loves sweet pickles, and he liked that. But I don't think where's that's a the sweet heat pickle, coming though. from? Well, it's got some sweetness to it. 
But where's the heat coming so from? So probably it looks like there's peppercorns in the bottom. That's a lot of that's still some spicy heat. A little bit oh, spicy heat. Yeah. We went. It's pretty we good went, though. Yeah, we went there that's and visited them a while oh, back. That's and, uh, a lot of pepper. I'm not sure where. They they had a mix awesome. that they were they yeah, they using. they they're doing I, a blend yeah they they had some different things they were trying out yeah it's just a lot of different stuff that they're they're using they they had a habanero one ooh that's would be that's, that's, that's gonna be good a spicy dickle pickle <laughs> <laughs> I like my pickles spicy you'd be getting the triple dickle in the morning <laughs> <laughs> the trickle the, yeah the, the, the trickle dickle just, just remember <laughs> dickle. F- fire in is fire out yeah. <laughs> T- t- tell that to the, f- the spicy man here. He knows that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he is the fire expert of spicy things. I don't know how he does it. Scorpion venom is the shit, man. I oh. love scorpion venom. He does. It's it's pretty It's, it's great pretty on the nasty. wings. I don't know about that burger, though, man. No, the wings are awesome. So let's go back to another beer from you guys. All right. So All right. where, well, where are we going next, Sean? I think, I think you should do the black IPA. Um, really? because we're going to go sure darker. Go yeah, no, 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 no. Let's uh, okay. let's go black IPA. It, it, they, they, I, I don't want to. <laughs> so, Any, again, okay. there's a lot of there's a lot of stoutness to this beer. There is. So it is a black IPA. So it's going to have great stout character. You're going to taste your your coffee, Before, your dark yeah. chocolate. Um, you're also going to hopefully you're going to get a hop nose. It took us forever to figure out how to get the hop nose in this beer because right. those dark malts. You get the hop really at the end. We're oh, really. Just we try we dry hopped this beer with Cascades, mm-hmm. and then we dry hopped it with more Cascades, and it was like the Cascades just are not cutting it. So we went to Citra. We're okay. dry hopping this with Citra now, okay. And so you should get that good strong grapefruit nose, right? Good stoutness, and then a nice dry bitter finish. I wanted to clear my palate a little bit with some pretzels before I started it because I got pickle juice going. I didn't want to spoil anything. Don't quit bitching about <laughs> pickle juice, Pat. There's nothing better on this planet than pickle juice. <laughs> I literally drank a glass of it last night watching TV. He does. It's it's weird. Yeah, that is weird. Thank you. It's, it's not weird. It's so good. <laughs> so we were doing our homebrew, and um, we did our second round of our stout. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we had our, our buddy Dan try it. And he's like, uh, this tastes more like a black IPA. And I'm like, yeah, that's not what we were wanting to do. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't uh, tell him what it was. We were like, we're hey, <laughs> guess, what, guess what we made? He's like, oh, it's pretty good, man. It tastes like a black pie EPA. And we're I'm like, like, crap, that was supposed to be a stout. That was a yeah. black IPA. Perfect. That was, exactly, we did it wrong. that was exactly what we were going exactly. for. That's what although, you say. Yeah, although for us, though, to be honest, because I was still Sour new to this stout. thing. That's exactly what we were going for. <laughs> exactly. For me, I was, I was new to this. They'd been kind of doing a little bit of this before I came on. Um, and I honestly didn't know that was a category. <laughs> I was like... What the hell's a black IPA? Is that is that actually a real category? And apparently it was. So I was like, well, so we still asked, and I wasn't sure if Dan ever said, well, that's a great taste in IPA or a horrible tasting stout. I don't know. I don't know what the answer was. He said, Jordan, it's now a black IPA because I say it is. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what he said. I'm like, so it's not it's not a stout anymore. Don't tell anybody it's a stout. Tell them it's a black IPA, and you're good to go. Well, we were talking earlier, and and that's that's a big thing for us. We want uh, beer to not be. One of those things where you go, oh yeah, that's try that. You got to try it because you got to have at least one of those. Just say you did it, and then yeah, I'll try something else. So (laughs) we we always want people to go. That was a good beer. I'll have another one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I'm looking up here at your daily specials, and I see three dollar pints Mondays, two dollar off fill Tuesdays, two dollar tasters Wednesdays. What is a twenty-five dollar bundle on Thursdays? So that's you get me and Sean together. Yeah. Ooh. (laughs) God, I wish it was Thursday. In, in the speedos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's a T-shirt, a pint glass, and a full growler. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. A T-shirt, a pint glass, and a full growler for... Now, does a pint glass have beer in it, too? No. It has a T-shirt in it. It well, can for $4. Know, <laughs> I was going to go over the 25 for that. That's 29 That's $29. That's 29 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's actually... That's a really good deal. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. We do do howlers or bullets. He said um, do-do. We do-do. <laughs> we do-do. <laughs> I like him. He's got our sense of humor. I may have had a beer <laughs> since two. we've been talking. <laughs> no. That's pretty good. Okay. I like it. Sorry. You no are that, sorry. Well, you are I know, sorry. I know, I know. Yeah, I am sorry. No, you're we, not. Uh, we uh, The Black IPA, we have actually talked about. I Okay, I almost say talked about. I argued that I would love to put that on Nitro. 
I think that would make it creamy. So we're, Ooh, yeah. we're, we're going to put a nitro tap on in here yeah. and uh, and get that and the stout on nitro. Do people right. normally do an IPA on nitro, though? Are there? I think uh, a black IPA you can. Guinness yeah. did. IPA. They, mean, they oh, made an IPA, Pat. Oh, no, no. I, I drink Guinness only. I don't Sorry. care about Papa anything Swim, that's come out since Guinness actually came out from their brands. I don't care about all the rest of their stuff. Especially their <gasps> blonde. Well, I haven't tried it, so. Their but blonde's not. Don't try Guinness what's, blonde. What's, what's, the, the blonde. what's the red one they make? The cream that no, you can't get in the U.S.? They make a red Guinness makes. Yeah, I, I honestly, cream. it took me the longest time they to realize Guinness made anything now. else. It's well, it's supposed to be Smith. Smithwick. They own Smithwicks. Yeah, but oh. I think it's that on nitro. But what's that called? What do they call that? It starts with a K. Hmm. I asked you about it the other day. Crap. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love the accent. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. Eh, we'll research it. <laughs> so when we had the red and the stout on, they do what? What do they call that? The Black and they, black and red. Well, yeah, it, but they, they, have, they have a special name for that when they do the red on the bottom and the black on the top. Oh yeah, it's like a <laughs> that time of brick, month brick shit house or something <laughs> like that. I forget. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> but I I tried for hours Period. to get that right here to get it to work, <laughs> and it it just I had to keep trying. If I can get it, uh, Guinness and Strongbow cider is oh, a yeah. really good, yeah. you know. But that's about one of the few ciders I like is if it's mixed with a Guinness. So, so that was one of the go-to things that I did um, growing up at the Harat when I was cutting my teeth on craft beer. Harat's a beer bar, yeah. craft beer bar here in Muncie. Big, but yeah, big one. Yeah, um, oh. and so this, Stinky. Uh, yeah, that was what I went to. I, 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 would, I would do that. I would get the the. They had Strongbow. You yeah. could barely get that in the United States, and they yes. had it. And I would get that with Guinness, and I forget what they called that. It wasn't. It's a, called a snake bite. It's a snake bite. Yes. Yeah. There's a place in Weston, Missouri. I've got a plug. Um, Go for it. O'Malley's. Okay. If you're uh, ever out in Weston, it, it's uh, it's North. Um, grocery store O'Malley's? No, it's <laughs> it's a it's a it's a brewery now. Oh. It's an Irish pub. <laughs> it's 50 feet underground. What? It's like a Best hob- music, it's like a hobbit hole. And they're they, afraid of missiles. They get, gr- they get some of the best beer around. I would put that in one of the top ten. Harat. Where's that at Fickle again? Fickle Peach, O'Malley's. Where's that at again? Uh, Western Missouri. All right, we're going to Missouri. We Is it near St. Louis? It is Kansas City. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a little crap. further. That's a little further, yeah. Hmm. It's northwest of Kansas City. That's doable, though. Yeah. So it's yeah. right across the, the river from Leavenworth. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kansas. wow. All right, gotcha. So this is the time of the show where we're going to take a quick break right here. Bienvenidos. Aquí estamos con los nuestros amigos de New Corner Brewing. Tex-Mex does that. I do that. Means he's been drinking. Usually I mean, right after the break, <laughs> they, we get like a Mexican intro. And I, it's all good. It's good for our Mexico City we, listeners, we, I guess. We need to learn how to say hi in Lebanon and, and Japanese. and Yeah, we should. And whatever else Japanese countries just, we're hitting. Ohio. Ohio goes on Mars. <laughs> Well, yeah, we actually, you and I should know. I, I should know that. I've forgotten most of my Japanese. Well, I, I knew that one. We, we met in Japanese class in high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> For fuck's sake. It was sake. the only Dude, Japanese class some in, you don't in Hamilton Southeastern. <laughs> wow. Some things you just don't admit, Pat. Yeah. That's one of them. Too late. Damn, now the whole world knows. <laughs> it's all right. I'll survive. All right, so, so we're back. New Corner Brew. Well, we're, we're, we're still here. What was that? If you, you spoke you Spanish, say, you'd know that. Could you say the brewery name one more time, though? New Corner Brewing. Okay, that's not what you that's said the first time. That was what I said. What do you think I said? I, I'm going to I'm gonna isolate that bit and, and send it to you. No, I did not say what you think I said. All right, so we are back, Sean. So what? what's our next beer? We're so, going to dive in here. Uh, uh, go, go for Rubicon. Rubicon. So tell us about this one. Okay, so this is, uh, <laughs> this is an American Pale Ale. Like I was saying before the break, we brewed. Uh, this was originally a beer that I made uh, as a home brew. And... Um, it's an American Pale Ale. We dry hop it with Centennials because my infantry division that I belong to, it's their 100th anniversary this year, so oh, we nice. dry hopped it with Centennials. I like it. So um should have some Centennial up front, not tons. Yep. Nice and balanced, I think. It's got I, I it's got a little bit of a spicy note to me. Um, this beer. It is there. I, I see. I, I can taste the spice that you're talking about. Yeah. Right there on the front. Yeah. I think that's still just more... Again, not an IP, not a you know hop person, heavy hop person. Yeah, but there's, there is a lot of hop on the front, but it's not bitter on the back way. So there's some malt in there, and yeah. and we use a little caramel forty uh, to do that, and, okay. and it gives it, it gives it that caramely kind of note. Um, and, nope. and I like it nice and balanced, uh, and, and that's what we're trying to go for with this beer. Now, when you said you were this was the original homebrew, did you 
start to adapt this from a kit, or was this just a straight up no, new this recipe? No, this was this was actually the very first recipe I designed completely on my own. I wasn't all doing grain. a clone. It was all grain. I wasn't cloning it, uh, we, and then we started tweaking it, and I dialed it in where I wanted it to be. It um, it's a little bit hoppier in the homebrew re- version, but people knew this beer because this was our first beer. Mm-hmm. This is the first beer we released, mm-hmm. um, crossing the Rubicon. Um, nice, and that's that, and, and they loved it, and so we kept it. No, I'm like, uh, I am still liking it. It's still it's it's still balanced. Not an IPA guy from you know, not a big hop person for me, but. I can't really find anything wrong with it. No. So you said you're using a 40, so I'm guessing that's where the little bit darker color mm-hmm. comes from. It is. Yep, because it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's it not is. amber colored. It's more of a very much between a amber and a brown color. It's, it's a whiskey color, man. So it is a, clear. Well, yeah, and, and it gives it a little bit of a redder note. Right. I didn't uh-huh. want it to be a red, but, you know, that redder note, the Rubicon, Rubicon is the Red River in, in Italy. Or a really kick-ass Jeep. Or a really kick-ass Jeep. <laughs> Expensive Jeep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I drive a truck. I have a... Because <laughs> I can't afford a Rubicon. <laughs> I have a Wrangler, but it's an X. It's not a Rubicon. You have a you have a princess Jeep. It's purple, isn't it? I call his Jeep the princess. My Jeep, oh, my God. My Jeep is A, not a princess, and B is not purple. Yeah. It's maroon. Thank you. Uh, it's more, it's moron. I mean, uh, maroon. It's, it's, better. it's rose-colored. So his, his Jeep is a princess. No, so he's I got mean, a princess Jeep, and he has a girl's name, Jordan. Yep. Awesome. Well, there's my life story, <laughs> folks. Thanks for listening to the show. No, I, I make fun of him because he his Jeep is is sensitive. It's got one of those, you know, an electronic clutch and all. You know, I mean, no one can seem to drive thought, it except him. I thought the point of a Jeep was to have it all completely stripped down, right? No doors, have, like, no top. No like no I said, he's got a pretty Jeep. Okay, so now stick we, shift. When you put it that way, I'm glad it it's is a, a stick shift. I'm glad it's a princess, so that when I strip it down, I don't feel a little weird about it. So. <laughs> Maybe calling my Jeep a princess is a good thing. Thank you. But no, it's Depends literally on what you do with it. Literally, after it's n- down. <laughs> <laughs> literally, no one else can drive it. That clutch is the weirdest clutch in the world. It's sensitive. Perhaps I should have named her Carrie then, because <laughs> she doesn't want anybody else touching her but me. Oh, Christine. There you go. Christine. 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 Not Carrie. Carrie. Damn. Carrie's, a, Carrie's a whole different movie. <laughs> I, I know my Stephen King. Yeah, it's Christine. I meant Christine. Holy shit! And I know my Stephen King too. I feel bad now it's the second half of the show sorry yeah. mr king you haven't had enough pickle juice <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I have a feeling he's going to chug the pickle juice later just so be careful no, i won't chug their pickle juice but when i get home i will have a glass for bed <laughs> wow dude <laughs> damn <laughs> yeah see i know you didn't even mean it like that but our guests just kind of backed off going <laughs> they do. what the hell was that what do we got to uh, do to yeah. be on this show <laughs> holy shit <laughs> wow <laughs> we'll tone it back even, down i did not even realize how that came out of my mouth that did come out pretty awful <laughs> it did I'd i'm like gonna leave to that in the show though because <laughs> the okay. guest reaction I'm, that was Sean, sorry about that man. i've only been in the army for 24 years i've never heard anything like that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your, your your look now, though was still you, you lean back was in the navy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stop it! I'll scoop, so you're an I'll anchor. So you're an anchor clanker. <laughs> yeah, that's what my dad always. My my uncle was in the army. My dad always. My dad was in the army. My uncle was in the navy. Mm-hmm. My dad always calls navy people anchor, anchor clankers. clankers. <laughs> Baron called a seaman. Yes, <laughs> marine just keep swimming. Well, my uncle. So my uncle was. Uh, my uncle was in uh, uh, self propelled uh, sandbags. He was on. Um, Submarines all the time. So, yeah. oh. Ooh. <laughs> Poor guy. Dive, dive, dive. Dive, dive. I was aircraft carrier. All right. So how do you guys oh, nice. feel about the Rubicon? I'm bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Take away from the pickles. Um, uh, again, I, I'm. it's a little hoppy for me, but uh, there's still nothing bad about it. You know, from from a standpoint, I could still drink that one. It does taste a little more red. It mm-hmm. does, like you said, it's... You didn't want it to be. A, it's not a red, but it does taste like a uh, close that, to that it's red. Got that, it's got that little bit of malt character to it. Yes. It's more of a British um, style of. So the uh, the equivalent in the British style would be an ESB, right? Yes. So it's it's more British in that nature. Would, would you guys actually make an ESB? I don't we think do. it's on tap. Yeah, you, have a, you have a frog baby. Frog it's baby, right? Really frog yeah. baby ESB. I thought that I'm partial. Um, <laughs> well, I, I will just say that uh, the guy that that was the owner of Broad Ripple. Brew pub uh, Mullins. Yeah. Oh, no, Jonathan Mullins. He's not the owner. Well, he's, he's the, the brewer, brewer now. But yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the old guy. Oh, oh I know. So his, yeah, I, 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 I've met him multiple times. I was drinking at the time. I don't remember his name, <laughs> and I and I and I had a whole career of never having to memorize anybody's name because it was on their shirt. He comes to my booth at all the beer festivals. 
to make sure I had the ESB for him. And if, awesome. I, if we're not pouring the ESB for the festival, I always have a little growler for him so that he can have some. So I got to admit, what festivals are you going to? Because we go to a lot of festivals. So we're at and all we the, ain't seen you. All the guild festivals. Uh, right. Okay, so you are part of the guild. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So okay. winter, you'll be at Winterfest then. Yeah. We've oh, been then at, we will see. We've been at Winterfest every year since we've we been were, open. We went to Winterfest last year. Well, there were only like I don't know 125 breweries there. That's yeah. why. Yeah, that's probably why. Winter, Winterfest is a big one. And our lines always and we're super good. long. Dude, uh, well, we were at Winterfest. It was me, uh, Dougie Fresh, and Cowboy, who aren't here on this show right now. But we went last year, and it was amazing. I mean, there were just so good. many there. But we, what was also amazing and strange about Winterfest was there were lines for beers that were common. You know, and you're like, why are you all standing in these lines? Yeah. <laughs> you can get this stuff all the time. Yeah. Go to the 40 other people that aren't around yeah. all the time, and, and let's try something new. That... um. <laughs> That a uh, cask tent or uh, the what was oh yeah the, uh, so we did we did <laughs> right we did a fun we did a uh, uh, so from Muncie is uh, Bob Ross Bob Ross and oh uh, no 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 <laughs> we did we did little, ha- just a happy little tree we yeah. did happy that little trees <laughs> nice. that was us we did a uh, then, spruce then I, dry I, hopped version then I have had it because I apologize I, I, I it has been a year you know since <laughs> I was there yet but. You remember then that? I've had that one, yes. Because I was like, happy little, really happy little fucking tree. <laughs> we, <Yeah. laughs> we couldn't stop ourselves. No, of we had a wig not. on. We, yeah, there was not? a wig on the keg. So. Yeah, we put the <laughs> wig on the keg. And actually, the, the, the head of the Brewers Guild, he like, I dress up as Bob Ross every Halloween. I got like six of those wigs. Here, I'm going to give you one. <laughs> Hell yes. That is awesome. <laughs> so, yes, I have had Do a new. I have had a new. Yeah? yeah. Did you like it? Yes. Really? I liked it. I, I, you're I, lying. No, <laughs> I, I, I might have been a little drunk at the time. It but must have been towards the <laughs> end. Yeah. We, so we did. It was. It was we, after our first. We actually took spruce needles and everything, and and it was still in the cask. Yeah, and it was all in there. It's still not. Ba- it still wasn't bad. I, I don't know that I could drink more than a pint of it, but no. <laughs> that was one of those where. Yeah, that was. I'm glad I tried it. And, and I'm done. What's, gonna, what's, what's next? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, can I get some pretzels? When we yeah. f- when we first <laughs> when we first put it together and first popped it open and tried it for ourselves, it was almost like pine sole. And I, I, I thought you should have we should have hung some of this. you should have hung and some it, of the pine. A couple of the guys were like, "I love this." <laughs> you guys are nuts. You should have hung. <laughs> well, they are. Should have should have gotten a bunch actually. of those. They are nuts. Should have gotten some of those car fresheners and <laughs> yeah. just hung it on there too. <laughs> been so nuts. originally, yes. Well, originally we had Bob Ross's picture with yeah. that. And I was like, "Look, I do not need a cease and desist notice today. Can we?" They, they can. I always tell Sean that they can only send that to you once, and you take it down, you're done. Yeah, it's too late. They're yeah, done. I mean, by the time they send it to you, Winterfest is over. Right. right. <laughs> I seen a picture. Okay, good. Great. So we won't do that again. Thank right. you. What's next on the beer agenda this so evening, gentlemen? You, do you want to try that? Yeah, we we poured you some different beers over here. You did. Right? Man, yeah. We're not even done with our first flight. No. <laughs> Um, we're before st- before you we're get staying in Muncie before you get happy with Liberty Street, which is what I've been drinking. Um, this is be, this would be the blonde. Okay. Yeah, this is our this is our Browers Blonde Ale. We named it after mm-hmm. the dog, um, who was our brew dog here. He passed away a year ago. Aww. May. Um, but there's a new one coming. There's a new one coming first week in November. He was a Great Dane, and he was just a little sweet puppy. No, Great Danes aren't aren't little. <laughs> For for the first week, they are. Okay, well, yeah, one week, maybe, and then they so, turn into a horse. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, Brower, we, when he passed away, was about the time we were really releasing this beer, so we named the beer after him, Brower's Blondale. Brower, the German word for brewer. We're That's one of our staple beers, and we're, we're keeping that one. And, the, and yeah, I was going to ask, I was like, is this, you know, usually everybody's got like a nice blonde, a staple blonde, a staple, you know, stout right. or something like that. But yeah, yeah we're going to try to keep five. Oh, that's, damn, we'll is that you? Is that you? Or? No. No, I did that. Oh, okay. No, not really. So uh, I, I need to plug this guy because we love him and he's awesome. And he's um, sexy. And <laughs> that's true. Um, is, is he a cabana boy too? the plugging comes in. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, no Jordan, juice Jordan for you. we don't even have to do anything on this show. Da- David <laughs> Delagardel. David Delagardel from Cedar Lore Forge. He's actually a swordsmith. Yeah. Are you shitting me? No, he's so, it's well it gets better. So can, he, can he make a blind pig sword? Have you seen the movie oh, Thor? He'll make a sticker for you. Yeah. The guy on the Rainbow Bridge, the yeah. big sword, he yeah. made it. He made that. Are you shitting me? He's here from here no, to Soto. You're my favorite turn. Oh. Can we call him now? and have him come over. He needs to make a blind picture. Uh, yeah, hang on. <laughs> so he comes over and drinks beer and draws on my chalkboard. Yeah. Nice. He, he's awesome. 
He is awesome. Apparently, he's not drawing the names of the beers because, like you said before, <laughs> the beers are all messed up on the taps. I have a hard time spelling. I'm good at math. Math is hard. Uh, like it, it, you can see uh, right up here. Like, yeah, he's got the, the dog. The dog. He did those in about five minutes. Are you, yeah, that's I a wish. Good so we went but to. He gets up there and he's like, we he's went got to a beer fest. And he's drawing them. He's we like, went hey, to a beer fest in Anderson, and we were like, crap, we forgot the the names for the beers to hang on the jockey box. He's like, oh, I got my sketchbook. Bam. Yeah. And it was like this. Right. Yeah, that's nice. Wow. So yeah, he needs to do, Does he do caricatures? Because we need that of all of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, logo. we need he's, a new, he's we need easy, new caricature but he's not cheap. I, need a new logo I can see now. you guys with little alien bodies and big fat heads. Well, well, we have a, actually, we have, a, we have an original. Fat. I'm working on it, man. What? No, we, you're, you're. We have an original skin. artist. Uh, he, he did caricatures <laughs> of us. Um, but he, it was when there were just three pigs. And now we've expanded out to six pigs. Plus, we have a pig pen. Of our, you know, our uh, followers and listeners, guys who come out and hang out with us. Do a you lot. have a big bad wolf? Uh, no, no, no big bad wolf yet. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we do have Griswold. Griswold is a bit hairy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's our, he's our security though. So you know, um, awesome. but yeah, we 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 actually might need to talk to that guy Jordan and see if we can draw a new uh, a new f- photo of all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I was pulling up the That'd website right awesome. now. Yeah, he's it's uh, he's pretty amazing. And a super nice guy. You know, there's been somebody just walking around here working the whole time we're having fun. So uh, maybe we ought to give a little bit of shout out. Who's the, who's the guy doing all the work in the that's, background that's here? That's my younger brother, Andy Brady. Andy? Okay. Well, shout out to Andy because he's been like cleaning, washing glasses, doing all the work while we're having fun. Andy's awesome. Poor, yeah. dude. Poor yep. guy. Do we, need to, do we need to get him a beer? <laughs> <laughs> Sean is very mean to Andy. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't encourage him. He'll just expect things. Yeah. That's all right. He, he's not going to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> we, t- we give him all the tip money. So, <laughs> so David did that, this tap handle. Yeah. Oh, nice. Like five minutes with a yeah. dermal. He Are you said, kidding me? No, he said no. he was bored at home, and he had that, and he brought it in one day. Take a picture of that too. There. That's amazing. Text mix. That's a picture of uh, me when I'm going to be 90. So, like in two weeks? Heimdall. Oh. <laughs> Heimdall. Damn it. I was trying to figure out the name. Of, you said, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, he did Heimdall's sword and Thor? Heimdall's sword, yeah. yeah. Oh. I, I'm an old school. Uh, yeah, I he, love the swordsmith. And it, I'm mainly like, I love watching like shows and documentaries on like Japanese sword making too, because that stuff was really awesome. I mean, they did some amazing stuff. Uh, but just still, the sword making and some of those. It's just you're just sitting there going, how the hell do they think coming up? So with if they crap? keep asking him to go on that show, he's like, yeah, that's not what I'm about. I just want to make swords. Well, no, some of those are stupid. And some of those are really stupid. That yeah. those I don't watch those like the that those reality ones. But yeah. I, I like watching those true documentaries of guys who actually yeah have done it for 50 years. And you and, know, and see what what's funny about him and not funny, but it's it's kind of neat. Is he's you see all these guys that do that blacksmiths are big, hairy, you know. Just yeah. big dudes. He's a smaller, thin guy, soft spoken, wow. real humble, super nice. I mean, you can't, you honest to God, you couldn't ask for a nicer guy. Like he's not a blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, you, you look at him and go, what? Pat's already turned on. You shouldn't do yeah. any more descriptions Shh. for oh, him. I'm sorry. So. And he's if been drinking. You look up, if you look up, <laughs> look up Cedar Lore Forge uh, on the Facebook, and the artwork that he's doing is phenomenal. And <laughs> and he's making our labels for when we start canon. I we'll make sure we tag him in the uh, social media stuff we do for you guys, too. So. Awesome. Yeah, I love how he did it. You can tell someone's age sometimes or how long they've been on social media when they call it the Facebook. The Facebook. <laughs> look it up on the Facebook and, <laughs> we've, and we've, the Twitter. <laughs> let's face it. We've kind of become social media am, whores ourselves. So. I am I, on the line. <laughs> we, I, I am. Are you? You on the interweb? <laughs> I am. I'm on the interweb with, with we the were, social media. I'm sad that I have to get rid of my aim now. Oh, man. Yeah, AOL got shut down, man. Come oh, on. Well. <laughs> I, do, I do the Snapchat. Yeah. The Snapbook and the Face Chat. <laughs> Why is nobody answering my, my MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> Tom is my only friend. We're old school, man. We go MySpace on this shit. So... <laughs> What was funny was last year we got we got nominated for best Instagram for no reason. We're, we're all like, the fuck? I mean, really, Instagram? That's what we got. So of I, all the stuff we do, we got nominated for, we best for, for the Nuvo stuff. You know so, now Nuvo does their thing. Yeah. So we got yeah, our and and just Dougie Fresh posts all his beers and everything on Instagram, and somehow we got nominated. Well, you know, I sit here with you guys for about an hour now, and Instagram's real short, so I could see that. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Damn. Damn. So we, we, we Damn. constantly get like compliments on. on our Instagram page. <laughs> yes. And it's like, yeah, I had a college inter- intern doing that. <laughs> so this year, though, we actually got, we actually still got another Instagram nomination. 
We got uh, what else did we get? Um, best radio personality. Best radio personality, <laughs> right next to like Smiley in the Morning Show. Hey, <laughs> awesome. like our dumbasses. <laughs> yeah, it's like, have you listened to this? Are you sure? And then uh, we also got. Uh, did we get Twitter too? We, we got did. Instagram and Instagram and Twitter, Twitter and yeah. uh, and um, which is funny because everything that posts on Instagram just gets put to Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> automatically. We don't actually play around with our Twitter anymore. Wait, <laughs> you, don't, you don't Twitter? Pat, Pat, well, I mean, keep your personal life to yourself, sh- man. Oh, my God. I think we should try the cream ale. There we yeah, go. There yeah, I, go. I, I well, agree. Well, I was going to talk about our awards. Yes, please, please do. No, please do. Right. Now, okay, like the Great American Beer Festival, they just had that, and we got nothing there. <laughs> In the last three years, we've got nothing there because we didn't enter. Damn it. Two years ago, we didn't enter the state. Fair. Fair. And, and we, didn't, we didn't do that either. Oh, you didn't? Oh. Last year we got in it, and I think we, we probably got there was a, I think there zero was a place. 150 Damn. places. We got 149. So we weren't last. Well, that's good. But uh, and we, we messed up. No. <laughs> way but, to, so way, the, way the, to push the, that. The way, the, so basically what we – our award is if you come here and drink, we got a spot out there you can go puke in. And the more people we get there, we're happy about. So if we get two people a night there, we've hit it. Well, we promise you, we're going to push yeah. your uh, we're going to push your beer on the show. So. Yeah. and we're, we're going to go puke there too. Good? Oh, we're going to puke there in a little. Well, bit. well you know what? I mean, to be honest, this is our second brewery up in Muncie. Uh, Guardian was our first one. Um, I don't know if you guys, you know, you know, hang out with those guys yeah, or yeah, talk with them at all. I know Bill and Jason. Um, their beers nice were place. great too. I mean, mm-hmm. we our, our experiences up in Muncie now have been really good and. Mm-hmm. There's so many beers at GABF and all that. It's oh yeah, and or even and even a lot of the local stuff, the right. state fair and all that. It's it's hard to, it's it's hard to get into. We've that never stuff. really got into entering any of the stuff like that. And okay, things. it's just kind of not our thing. Well, but so. if if you're making if you're doing what you're doing, you're having a good time. Right. You're paying the bills, hopefully. <laughs> you know what I mean. But every <laughs> once, once a, in a while. once a month, every every, hey, every month. other month, if you're not more than thirty days. You get to sixty, then exactly. they start calling. Then they start calling. So yeah, as long as there's no red stamps on any of the envelopes coming in, <laughs> locks on the door. <laughs> you're okay. It don't matter. You're a locksmith. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Have slanch hammer. Will travel. <laughs> but no, I mean it's uh, our experience up in Muncie has been great so far. Uh, you know, and it's yeah, and, I, I can't. And say the great it, thing about the thing brewer, about- the brewers here in Muncie is there are four of us, and we're all different. Mm-hmm. We'll have different styles, so you're not going to taste. Um, you're going to have, if you go like a beer tour here in Muncie, you're going to have a different experience yeah, at each at one each of our one. locations. Right. Oh, definitely. So they all have different philosophies, and it, it makes it kind of neat for just you know for one evening because you hit four or five breweries, you're you've done you've done something. Yeah, uh, you've, you've because put, you put on hard days. Yeah, work. your palate's pretty pretty wasted uh, yeah your, it, it your, is hard by the by the last yeah hit that yeah. last brewery and it's and, like uh, uh and, and just kind of in a nutshell i mean you know we've got we've got us here at new corner and then you have guardian that you spoke about we've got elm street and, and then you wolf's have the wolf's head yep and uh bob at wolf's head he does he likes to do a lot of full body flavored yeah stuff. he's a he's an imperial kind of guy right. yeah. he stouts does. and things like that and he really likes and gets into that and he does really well at that uh, Elm Street, they go, they go really flavorful. Yeah. And Experimental. They Rick's, he, yeah, they, he is always pushing the envelope on right. what beer is. And yeah, if it's got a style and you think you're going to get that style, you're not. No. But it's a, it's some you'll find some you like. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's just one of those things. But and they never repeat anything, mm-hmm. and that's kind of their thing. And then Guardian, they're kind of like us. They do it, but they they like to do the flavor stuff. They, they like, do. They like to blend. Well, there I I am looking forward to there and not to. Not to take away from anything, I'm looking forward to their pumpkin one because when we did go to theirs, they had that sugar cream mm-hmm. Right. I was going to say the sugar cream oh, pie. Holy crap. Do you like Ola. that? Ola. Really? Yes. Yeah. You didn't like it? Well, I didn't get to try it. I heard, oh. I, I wasn't there. Sorry. Jordan was there. That was... I was there. I was expecting something awful because he, right. he said normally... They literally put pie in the beer. No, yeah. exactly. Normally, like, and, and when we talk... and threw them in there. Yes. <laughs> normally, you know, when you talk to them, oh, we did a pie beer, it's like, oh, we take the essence of the pie and put right. it in. Right. No, they literally dumped the freaking pies, crust and all. And he said, yeah, the cleanup was horrible. Oh, I bet. <laughs> and he said, that, but they're doing the pumpkin one, that, you know, and this was the first year. It's, I guess it's coming out in a couple of weeks, but I do want to try that one because it re- they're Wix pies. Right. Mm-hmm. And they From were, Winchester? Yeah, and they were awesome. I yeah. mean, it really was. You yeah. didn't expect. I thought it to, was going to be like there was going to be some weird residue from the crust, you know. When you're like fat, that's the big thing. Exactly, that, that's the fat, fat from the crust, and the oily. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't. It was, 
if you didn't get to try it, hopefully you'll go out and, you know, try that. But I am looking forward to that. But do you guys got what else do you guys got coming up? I mean, you got so anything new you're going to try here? We're, yeah, we're going to start getting into Belgian beers. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, so everybody tells me, so if you were, if you were brewing a beer for you, what would you be brewing? I'd be, I would say I'd be brewing a Belgian pale ale. Right. And I just, um, I just did a triple at home. So yeah. Sean's had it. I don't know yeah, what you think of it. It was good. It was really good for a, you, better you know, huh. <laughs> amateur. Am- yeah. <laughs> amateur. It sucked. No, it was good. It had the, it had a great clean finish, nice and bright. Mm-hmm. Um, really flavorful. Um, that that's the kind of thing we go for here, and I think that's something we're going to try and replicate on the on a larger scale. That's right. awesome. So the pale, I think I think we'll try to do the the Belgian pale ale. We'll probably do a triple. So we're everybody gonna, does doubles, but yeah. the the Heffenweez and I love. I, and, I, I and, love and we want to do like a sa- we want to do a saison. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that was actually our first. first. That was actually our first, and mm-hmm. the one that we ended up getting brewed. It was our uh, you know, our suey saison. Mm-hmm. Um, we we're tr- going to try for a blood orange, so, but blood orange, you know, is picky. So we we just did a straight orange, straight saison. So mm-hmm. those those clean beers are very hard to do the second time, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we know because <laughs> because there's so little room to play. So you right. have to be tech. You've got to have that. You're got to be dialed in on your brew house before you start doing your industrial lagers because as much as they suck you can't you you there's no flavor to deviate on because not it'll on be log- different no yeah not at all yeah. It'll, you, people will notice it and the flavor profile will be different and people will be like oh, this isn't the same thing i had the last right. time and, and a lot of people don't realize if you don't have a big system you don't get to blend and a lot of oh, them no. don't know the blending <laughs> aspect of a lot of those big places where okay i made this this month and then now i'm making this well, I'm going to put that in the same tank, and so what's going to taste it's gonna, all we're the gonna, same. We're going to blend so, it. So guys like us that are a small microbrewery, nano, nano brewery, whatever you want to call them. Are you considered a nano? Uh, no. We, we, what's we the brew, barrel we, limit for? So I think it's, uh, I want to say f- it three or four. Yeah. I've always heard different no, things. No, we're, 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 I think we're in the micro now. Yeah. We should be. I mean, but... We don't have the capacity to put things and and actually blend them exactly. The way a yeah, lot and try to and, yeah mellow it so, out because we're gonna turn we gotta turn those some, tanks over all the time, right? And, and and you know we might we'll order the grain might sit for a little longer so it ages a little different gets a little different you know and and with the Rubicon I didn't hear you say it earlier but I think it used to be Munich. Yeah, we used to put Munich and, in it. And so some people are like, well, that was a little different than I tasted last time. Well, we didn't. We tried different things. Now, if we if we had... So Frog Baby is a different recipe every time because I right. love the ESB as a style. Yeah. It can be so versatile. So I'm always <laughs> changing it up. I'm always like, oh, this time I want to do a little chocolate malt. Oh, this time I want to dry hop it with English hops. Or, oh, this time, but it's an always an English style traditional english style and it's always going to be something just a little bit different but it's always going to be frog mm-hmm. baby you know oh, we're gonna yeah. it's it's okay. a it's a variation on a style you know and, and if you're selling it like that it's okay so hey right. you know, frog baby it's it, it's a yeah it, it's it's an experiment or you know we're trying this it's an frog baby's always different it's an yeah. evolution yeah. but yeah, it's long, it, it's an ESB evolu- is a little, evolution exactly yeah and esb is a little easier to change like that because you're not it's not super hoppy it's not super anything it's just kind of a nice clean drinking beer so to, you've got sour stout in front of you. I know. Uh, I've got two beers you, left. I've got two beers left. You've got three, three beers. Three beers left. Cream ale, if you want that as well. Yeah, let's I, go ahead and do the cream ale real quick. And I, then I've we'll, had lo- I've had two pints of cream ale. Well, you guys we're gonna go do right it. Ahead. So so I'm I'm drinking the cream ale myself. So we we get a lot of compliments on the cream ale, especially in the summer because it's nice. Oh, well, I'll give you a compliment on it right now. Another one too. It's excellent. It's the first you. one I had here. It's smooth. It's got a good mouthfeel to it. And it is, it's, it's as a cream ale should be. So we, right. we, we, you know, where, where a lot of this mouthfeel comes from is the carbonation. We almost over carbonated. Really? Yeah. yeah. So this has probably got over two volumes of CO2 in it. See, I, I wouldn't have put it down to that. I, I yeah. was just going with Because, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's, it's very clear. Well, uh, and also. Now it, we use a pale ale malt in it. Okay. So that's where the darkness, I mean, it's a little, it, it's not as. You know. Clear and light as a pilsner, and people but can't see it. There. But even your lace, if it's got good lacing, the yeah. the, the you know the head stays on if you you give it a little bit. But it's still it's still right. It sticks. Everything's great. And that's a, a lot of things people don't understand that are just looking at beers growing out and tasting them. Is, is carbonation is a huge oh yeah huge part and of the it beer. adds flavor. If, if, right. if you look to Ron, if, if if you look at if you listen ever listen to Ron Smith, um, you know beer guy, it's one of the beer gods of Indiana right now. Mm-hmm. 
Um, he will actually tell you, drink your beer down a minute, because they'll usually pour it wrong. Right. Drink your dear beer down a minute and swish it around and get ahead on there. Right? Yeah. So that you get, because so, it's like wine. Amen you need to a that, nose. Brother, you I'm telling nose. you what. So well, what we're doing with carbonation, if a brewer is worth their salt, they're making sure that that's got good carbonation in it because that effervescence is bringing those aromas yeah, up to your nose. The first, th- the first thing that you want to do is smell your beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to give it a good whiff in because w- that that effervescence is bringing up all those volatile hop oils. Yep, it's bringing up that that malty character out of the beer, informing your palate, and then you get a good flavor. And unfortunately, we use cups like this, which is a regular pint cup, and it's the worst cup to use. But yeah. it's still okay, Jordan. No, I was just gonna say, in, in case you guys didn't notice, I was, the whole time I was over here shaking it after he talked yeah, about yeah. the carbonation, see how much, see how much, you get, yeah, yeah, how much head I you can get back on the top uh, of it. Yeah. I spilled a little, but but no, you need and and again, if you're trying a new one, for those of you out there, drink your beer down a little bit because most of the time your average bartender is gonna pour it wrong if you're just because they're trying to get you more out, they're trying to get you more volume and they're actually oh, doing yeah. a good thing, but drink it down a bit, don't judge it on that first taste, swish it around. Get a little bit ahead on there because it really it is. It's like wine. Right? Yeah, you, you want there's a nose there, and that nose is there for a reason. Well, and the lighter beers are they're better cold. Yeah. Your heavier beers let them warm up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, especially your, your stouts, your ESBs. Like oh yeah, ESBs. So when we use chocolate malt in the Frog Babe, we talked about mm-hmm. that. You got to let it warm up a little bit because yeah. that chocolate malt start, starts to shine through. Right. Totally different because beer. it can't it can't get out of there. Even barrel the barrel aged ones. Yes. Are you got to let them warm. You got to right. get a little the complexity bit complexity of, of flavor. If, if it's been in a barrel, you if you don't drink it a little. Warm, I don't, I'd say five it, degrees warmer. Room temperature. Warmer. It's got to right. be room. Don't if, drink if it, it ice cold. Yeah, because beer it will is totally always, change. Beer is always better closer beer. to its fermentation temperature. Right. Yep. And so lager beers. What? Lager beers that ferment colder. Right. 45. For, 40s. Drink them cold. Yeah. yeah drink, drink them cold. Right. Ales brewed probably in the 70s, 60s, 70s. to 73. Yeah. yeah you're going to want to drink them warmer. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to give you that depth breadth and complexity of flavor right that you guys are trying to put into the beer right yeah exactly because you guys know what you're trying to put into the beer but not everybody knows how to and it sounds of the of the glasses oh definitely like the chalice and everything all right so we're we're getting really really close to time in fact we're probably a little bit over but so so go straight to the liberty street this is our ipa yeah this is one of our staple beers well we can probably still get to the sour stout real fast okay (laughs) so this is dry hopped with citra it's going to be cloudy we use weed in it because we keep the malt way low and light. That's weedy. Yeah, I like it. I like it. No, yeah. it's I'm, it's I'm got good. a lot. Of, it's got a lot of body to it. That it's, has a lot of body with, and mm-hmm. the 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 hops are fine. It, on it. it almost drinks like an imperial or a double, but then you don't have without that the hop much hops. Nasty, right. Yeah, without right. the hop bitter to it. Right. Yeah. No, I'm 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 liking. Which that, one is this? Liberty that's Street. Liberty Street. Liberty Street. Yeah. Nice uh, for an IPA. This is actually an IPA I could drink, Jordan. And and Robert Roberto, sorry, I'm a big Tex-Mex. IPA fan, so okay. like, I don't mind the hops. I don't mind that right. up front. So you know, citra, kinda... citra up front. It's yeah. got a little bit of amarillo in the middle of the boil to give it some spicy hoppiness. So if you notice that, especially now that it's warm, we've mm-hmm. had this beer sitting out for yeah. over an hour now. Yeah, it's probably going to have that little bit of spicy bite to it in the yeah. middle of the palate, and it's yeah. going to finish nice and clean. Yep. Right. It's great. I really, I actually like beer. the spicy note in the middle, so I kind of like yeah. this one a little bit warmer. Yeah, so yeah, it's not it did, doesn't take away from it, you know, because mm-hmm. if it sits for a little bit, it's still going to have that full bodiness. Well, you, it's going to have that. Yeah, it's so, like it's that whole ill thing. You start letting them warm up, you get it to the point yep. and you start f- tasting flavors that you would not have tasted cold. Correct. Mm-hmm. So and, it's it's really nice. And Darren is the one that <clears throat> turned me on to Amarillo hop as a spicy a way to add that spicy hoppy mm-hmm. note to a beer without the bitter without, without the harsh. bitter yeah. so yeah. where did you add the amarillo in this one then so it's like 45 minutes into the boil so it's just so the last rest, 15 rest. yeah it's a flavor flavor to aroma hop okay right. kind of addition 30 to 45 minutes and Jordan, then, jordan's taking notes yeah <laughs> I like spicy, and he, you know, if he's willing to share, you know, I so, might drop some Amarillo so on my next brew. It's, so that's the way hops go. If we, you put those, in, like he said, forty-five minutes and down in the boil from the beginning to up to about if it's an hour boil. Right. So if you have that up to the forty-five minutes, everything that is going to be there is going to be a little flavorful, but more aroma. Mm-hmm. They're they're going to be in there, and then the stuff you add at the end, that's going to be what you taste. The bittering yeah. hops; those are all in the last ten minutes or and so. And so we, or we right in or dry hopping. We try to right. use a very neutral, clean bittering hop. Mm-hmm. It tends to be middle to high alpha. Um, we'd like to first boil it 
just because we want, we don't want. I, I don't know what it is, I, and I, I and and I'm going to try not to geek too much out on it. But I feel like that when you add at first wort the hops, you're not scr- you're not scorching the hops. Mm-hmm. So you're getting uh, you're getting hop complexity um, as you're bringing those hops up to temperature in bittering. Now you don't get the quite the utilization in bittering that you want to do, but um, yeah, you still get the aroma and flavor. You still get oh, the definitely aroma and flavor. right. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And that's that's like with the stouts and the coffee and everything, the secondaries and so I think cold we m- crashing and I mean, all kinds. Of- so we we're gonna have to kind of wrap it up. We're hitting it a little over and, and you know and, and um, we'll finish out. Probably won't be able to talk long on this, or we can try this next time. I've never seen a sour stout. So it is a sour stout. We soured it with lacto. Uh, yes, it's not. It's not a bread. A sour stout. Was uh, this, there he goes. I was, I was, I was I'm, <laughs> so, so no. I have to ask: Is it a but, mistake? But it's also it's but, it's not bad. But we kept it right. No, so so it's intentional in the fact that we were like, hey, we knew what we did. We knew it. We knew it to begin with, right? Yeah. And we're like, but well, I like well, oh, oh, okay. Let's see what it does, and if it doesn't infect every flipping thing else in the brewery, <laughs> if we drink it and we don't crap for the next twenty four hours, which it did. And we threw a lot. Of wait, beer which out. you did, or wait? <laughs> wait, I, 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 I always in, do. It uh, infected everything because he said I did. Did it infect uh, everything? I thought. I we, thought uh, we threw Brett. out five batches of beer because of this one. Oh yeah. shit! I thought really? I didn't think lacto was that I, dangerous. It's I, not. I, but if, if, it's I just, almost took a b- flipping flamethrower to this brewery. Well, yeah, uh, but and Brett is is extremely dangerous. But lacto, I thought, was much more controllable. So lacto is in your grain dust. Oh shit! Right. Oh, you got lacto in the. Oh damn. See, but I'm, okay, I'm not a sta- I'm not a sour guy. You. So this is not like my it, it's favorite not, cup of tea. Yeah. It's very light. It's not yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not overpowering sour. Yeah. So I, I think it's a. I, I honestly think it's a neat and, little and, beer. And, and neat when, beer. And when right. this this is the last keg of it. Okay. And yeah. when it goes, it's gone. And that's right. fine. I think it's a neat beer. Uh, uh, you know, it's an experimental one and something you learn from and whatever. But I I don't find it. It's not nasty. I've had beers that are nasty. Oh yeah, yeah. it's not <laughs> offensive or anything. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Not right. at all. I went to a place in in North Carolina called the Funkatorium. And, oh, uh, I know. Yeah, I've heard oh, of them. Yeah. And uh, I went in there, and I'm not a sour guy. And I just went in there, and I said, "Look, I'm going to do a flight." And I said, "I want to taste nice stuff from the beginning to end, and at the end, I want to pucker." And I think that's more of a beginning beer. Yes, and, you know that's why I said yeah. absolutely because it's you 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 if you like sours and kind of think, oh, I want to try one out. It's nice to try because it, it's, so, a, it's just not. This is not. This is actually a nice. It's like a sour. To be honest, cider. it's a nice little introductory, w- right. different one. Right. So, but again, yeah. you don't see stout ones. But if you you start getting into kettle sours and the uh, or true wild yeast sours mm-hmm. and things like that, and you're open. If you're getting into a tart, well, if you're getting into Flanders and all those, and you're getting into tart, I'm a sour guy, but I'm I'm really picky. The tarts are harsh. Yeah. yeah. Anything that's a tart, Flanders are very difficult to do as well. K- Caleb from Upland is from Muncie, by the way. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. No, oh, no. I know. Yeah, I know Upland and their sour funk, sour wild funk yeah. fest, and I've missed it two years in a row now. <laughs> that's so, <lucky>. so to, <laughs> I know that we're short on time, but I, just to geek out on this a minute, please. Dark malts, even the even the bacteria can't eat them, so that's why this is mellow. Right. It, they they can't right. eat that high chain sugar, almost burntness, so that stays in the beer, and so it it it, 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 it balances it the sourness, and you're not getting pucker. I didn't notice it. Yeah, I did. I did not know that. And so the roast stays in there, and the stout. Okay. We took that to the Bloomington Fest down there for the beer. How, fest. how and did anybody say? Loved it. Really? Oh, they we, we had blew lines. that keg. Yeah, <laughs> and we didn't think we would. We thought, ah, eh, we're gonna try to get rid of it. It was a full keg. And that didn't it's happen done. a lot. And, and, yeah. and we took that down there and people kept coming back. Are you the ones with the sour stout? So we did this yeah. on we did this on Nitro and they loved for it. a beer fest, yeah. uh, the Columbus Beer Fest. Oh, shit. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. That I, I'd like to try that. But again, you said this is done. Uh, it's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I can understand it because if you had to burn 
five other batches of beer or whatever, and I think you don't I, want to try conf- it again. Conf- confessions of a brewer. I, I've uh, I've learned my lessons. <laughs> I think I can control it, but I won't. I, I, oh gosh, but, it's but so until scary. You a, but until you get it's a larger, yeah, until you get a larger space. I mean, or Caleb a Flippin sp- has his own brewery for sours now, right? Right. right. I don't want to make this a sour brewery. Right. right. You have to you have to literally establish a second brewery, if, don't if you, Jordan? You know, yeah. If you I know mean, you're yeah. doing it, you know how you can clean out for it and do things and prepare. But when you do it as a mistake and it's kind of like, oh, crap, why did it just happen? Okay, we're going to try that. And then you leave it, and then other things go through there. You're, that's where it messes so up. So we'll, we'll confess to you here real quick. So we were home brewing. We, um, we soured a batch, and we thought we had it all cleaned up. We made another batch. We soured that, too, and that's when we were like, eh, We made another batch. Brewery operations are done. No, we are going to shut down for a minute till we get this all cleaned up, find out what the hell just caused this, which we found out later. Don't use plastic fermenters out there in the uh, homebrew world. <laughs> yeah, we also and, had a uh, problem. We, al- yeah. we also had a problem with uh, carbonation too. So yeah, we, carbonation we did still not doing... cause the souring though. No, not the it souring. It was definitely the um, plastic. But we were still doing bottling yeah. and priming sugar, and that just didn't work out. Yeah. yeah so we've learned a lot it along our journey too. If I were still bottling as a homebrewer, I wouldn't be brewing today. That no. sucks. Oh, it, it does. does. Suck. The cleaning sucked. Um, our our we never. There were a couple times where, like, uh, the guys started bottling, like, hey, did anybody remember to put the priming sugar oh, in the? <laughs> oh, no, we got poured back in, put the priming sugar. This is, that, that's why we don't drink on brew day. <laughs> <laughs> we I still just, drink on our I brew day. I just made a whole batch of, uh, <laughs> we was talking about Belgian triples. I just made a whole batch of uh, triple without putting any hops in it. Huh. So oh, we called that <laughs> Watson <laughs> Weezing. Were, were you drinking? I was drunk. We were. They, no, we, no, we, here's what you need I to call it. Drunk, no, I'm here, just drinking. Hold on, here's what you need to call it. Hopping missing. Hopping, mi- well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well played. Well played. Yeah, we, we, we have this habit of, okay, we're going to make this today. So we go buy a bunch of whatever we're making, and we sit and drink it while we're doing it. And triples are a bad thing to drink when you're yes. brewing beer. So, considering they're yeah. nine and a half and up. All right. So. I, know we're, I know we're short on top. Oh, we're tell good. the story. <laughs> Jordan, so, you want to close it out? Now, let me tell the story real quick. All right. So the buddy of mine that was in college. So we were doing the 100 beers at Herat. Oh, and we had drank, we were like three beers is our limit, but we had like three little 12 ounces and we we're like, let's get a fourth one. And we're like, yeah, that's a good idea. What's the Chimay? And we got, oh, <laughs> and exactly. we got a Chimay and it was the 750 milliliter bottles. Right. And so we were like, oh, and the rule was since you're on the, the beer club menu, you had, you, you couldn't order it. You had to drink it all. Right. And so we drank all that. And, uh. So we get home back to the apartment that night, and my buddy, I, I get out of the bathroom, and he's standing in the hallway with his arms on the on the door, <laughs> and he he's standing there looking into his room, and I'm like, "What are you doing, dude? Waiting, waiting for, for the beer, <laughs> waiting for the bed to come back around again." <laughs> 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 Hell yes, that's awesome. We've all, we've all been there. I, I can oh, promise yeah. you, I've been there myself. Never but. been there. Wow, man. Lie. <laughs> missing out, you actually. Lie, sir. <laughs> You're a wine so, drinker. All right, guys. Well, quickly. thank you very much for having us up here at uh, New Corner Brewing Company. We appreciate it. Thanks you guys are always welcome. Yeah. Great and, uh, awesome. Yeah, we definitely will be pushing you guys down there. If uh, if we can help you guys get uh, any beers on tap down in Indy, let us know. Hopcat, would... Pint Room. Um, <laughs> where are you down t- there? Uh, we're on that. Uh, oh. Kettle. No, ten. that's ten. Oh, this gosh. black IPA would be great at Copper Still. I was going to say, we're Copper kinda, Still? Copper Still. We're there at Allie's Ale House all the time, so um, <laughs> Mel, uh, we're going to get these guys on at uh, Allie's. So. Shout out to Mel. <laughs> Shout out to Allie's Ale House. Yep, so Love absolutely. Love to have you guys down there. And uh, Muncie's not really that far from Fishers, though. We don't mind coming up here and hanging no, out. So right. cool. we'll definitely be back. I'm sure the other guys are going to be jealous when they find out how good your beer is. So beer, Hey, beer, pickles, and cheese. Beer, That's right. Pickles and All cheese. made with beer. Oh my. All charcuterie. made with New Corner Brewing. It's charcuterie. Absolutely. We, we had a charcuterie board here. Shark board. But Jordan calls it shark board because he can't pronounce charcuterie. <laughs> Not after a few beers. <laughs> and if you stay long enough, you get a triple pickle. Ooh, yes. <laughs> dickle. Right. Well, no, no. You don't I didn't get say the dickle. dickle pickle. <laughs> you ain't getting the dickle pickle here. You just might get the big pickle. <laughs> oh, ooh. Damn. Even better. On All right, that guys. Note. Thanks for having us. Everybody have a great night. Cheers. 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 There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. My baby goes that night and stays till the morning comes.